Across the country, more than half a million people rely on a service dog in their everyday life. These elite dogs are the product of months of schooling, and not all puppies that begin training have what it takes to become a service dog. If a pup doesn't live up to the strict standards required, they will fail out. Which puppies have the brains and behavior to make it through the rigors of training? We find out in Puppy Prep. On the California coastline, about halfway between Los Angeles and San Francisco, sits Arroyo Grande, a small community of beaches, mountains, and wineries. Just outside of town is Doggy Do Good, a training and obedience school specializing in the education of service dogs. Depending on the dog, the journey from carefree puppy to hero can take anywhere from six months to more than a year. Not all dogs make it through the process. If a dog flunks out, it's put up for adoption. At any given time, there are dozens of service dogs in training at Doggy Do Good. The abilities they learn range from retrieval to stability, pressure therapy, medical alerts, simply kisses, and much more. What they learn depends upon what each individual dog is predisposed to. For instance, Yellow Lab Deacon specializes in retrieval and stability. Good, steady. At almost two years old, he's older than many of the dogs that have already graduated. He was a stubborn pup, and though he had come close to flunking out, he is now only weeks from potential graduation. Still, he can't coast. Until the minute before graduating, trainers are watching the dogs for any sign that they won't be able to cut it. Right now, Deacon and his classmates are working on basic cum drills. The pups run around the lawn and play, and one by one, the trainers call out to them. Kai, come. Good girl. Good cum, Kai. Cooper, come. The most important thing a dog needs to learn is the difference between playtime and work time. While it's all right for the dogs to act like puppies, as soon as the trainer calls them, they need to snap into work mode. These drills help solidify that skill. For a veteran like Deacon, this is simple. If Deacon is a senior in Service Dog High, one of the incoming freshmen is Kaya, an eight-month-old golden retriever. Kaya is beautiful, and I love her. If she fails out of school during training, I will be trying to adopt her. And right off the bat, she's having a problem. See, Kaya enjoys the company of people over other dogs. While it's good to be comfortable around people, she can't remain nervous around other dogs if she's going to pass training. Kaya's half-sister, Remy, is also starting class. Though they share a dad and are almost the same age, Remy has a completely different personality. Remy loves to play with other dogs and often tries to pull her half-sister out of her doggy shell. For the especially young pups, like six-month-old Chocolate Lab Benelli, learning the come command begins on a long leash. A trainer calls Benelli and gives a gentle tug. This one little pull is all the puppy needs to come the rest of the way. Until she recognizes the command, the leash helps Benelli understand what the English-speaking humans are trying to communicate to her doggy ears. So far, she's doing an all right. Cleo, stop getting everyone into trouble. Keep it up, Benelli, and you'll be off that leash in no time. After this morning exercise, it's time to try something more subdued. Most of a service dog's time isn't spent running around or actively working. Instead, being calm and on call, ready at a moment's notice to help. The puppies must lay down and not get distracted for long stretches of time. Trainers toss toys around to make sure the dogs will choose their jobs over pure playtime. Stay, guys. 
Whenever a dog breaks from their downstay, it isn't enough for the dog to simply lay back down. The trainer needs to take the dog back to the position where they were, otherwise a puppy won't understand the gravity of getting up. If a dog is always distracted and can't learn to focus, that's the quickest way to fail puppy prep. Kaya's brother Luke is late to class. He spent the morning off-site with a trainer and, without having had the morning to run around like the rest of his classmates, Luke may be too bored to sit still. Benelli, all you have to do is literally stay still. If Benelli can't stay when the ball is tossed over her head, she may become too distracted when taken out in public. Remy, come on. You pups just need to relax. These two have just started, so their behavior isn't a huge problem yet. Kaya, however, is just as new and already a pro at downstay. That's why you're my favorite. With most of the dogs being unfazed by the toys, it's time for some livelier distractions. Good stay, guys. Oh my god, it's Mr. Pip. <laughs> Mr. Pip is, beyond being absolutely undeniable, also a service dog in training. Smaller dogs can comfort people with anxiety, as well as help alert people with diseases like diabetes when they need to take their medicine. Now, however, his only job is to distract his classmates. Most of the dogs don't fall for the enchanting dance of Mr. Pip, except for Tank the German Shepherd. One thing that Tank needs to work on is his prey drive. Small animals like cats and Mr. Pip can distract larger dogs when they're with their future owners. Tank must fight his most basic instincts in order to pass puppy prep. And as for Mr. Pip, he isn't scared. He has a job to do, and he performs it admirably. God bless you, Mr. Pip. By the end of the downstay lesson, it looks like everyone's made progress. But there's one more test. Mercy. A Malinois with almost unlimited energy, Mercy belongs to Sandy, the owner of Doggy Do Good. Immaculately schooled, Mercy acts as a four-legged trainer, squeaking the toy just as the people trainers would. Mercy's claimed a victim. With only a month from his planned graduation, Deacon should know better than to break from downstay. If he continues to lose focus, he may have to stay in school for extra months. Or worse, flunk out. As for the other dogs, they've taken their lessons well. For most, it's still early in their service dog training. As long as they can keep making progress, the puppies show good promise of graduating. Kaya, in particular, shows a lot of potential, especially for her young age and upbringing. Unlike her brother Luke, who was raised since birth by trainers at Doggy Do Good, Kaya went off to a puppy raiser family. Many of the dogs at Doggy Do Good live with a foster family for the first few months of their life. There, they learn the most basic behaviors, like potty training. When pups reach six to eight months, they return to Doggy Do Good to begin service dog school. Kaya's family dropped her off a few weeks ago, and she's seen them only once since. Today, however, they're back for a visit. When trainer Paul brings Kaya outside, she thinks she's going for a walk. What she doesn't know is that the family that raised her is waiting around the corner. Kaya. During their training, it's easy to forget how young the dogs are. When allowed to roll around with her former family, Kaya is all puppy. Even if foster father Ray wants to make sure she still behaves. Leave it. Puppy raisers are a crucial part of the service dog process, and often one of the bottlenecks to training service dogs. Newborn puppies need near constant attention to learn the basics of obedience. Good girl. And while it's fun for the family to raise a puppy, knowing they have to say goodbye in a few short months can be difficult. Kaya's family is proud of the job she'll someday have, and while they still miss Kaya, the family thinks that soon they'll be ready to take another puppy to help begin its journey to becoming a service dog. At the end of the day, the good boys and good girls at Doggy Do Good have taken another step toward becoming fully trained service dogs. 
But tomorrow is another day, filled with new challenges and distractions that could ruin a dog's career. Which puppies have what it takes? Mr. Pip! <laughs>